division. Am I right? There's no denying that it can come as a bit of a shock. There we are, happily counting up and down on our fingers to add and subtract, chanting together in chorus to learn our times tables, and then division comes along, and suddenly, we're on our own. Our fingers are like, can't help you pal, the chorus line fizzles out awkwardly and backs slowly out of the room, and we're left alone with Bertha, who's demanding assistance to share her 12 sweets between her three greedy little friends. If you or your child are discombobulated by division, rest assured that you're not on your own. Here's how you can conquer it. If you take nothing else away from this video, let it be this. If you're struggling with division, check that you've nailed your times tables. Now, I realise this might not be the news you were hoping for, particularly if you feel as though you're falling behind in class or you've got an important division appointment coming up. But multiplication and division are like two sides of the same coin, like the left and right sticks of a Kit Kat, like Netflix and ads. You just can't have one without the other, apparently. But maybe you've already signed up for the Dutch Division Derby. Not a real competition. Totally should be. And you're determined to represent your country with pride. Or maybe you've lied on your CV about being highly proficient in division and they're expecting you to share out the volivants at the staff party tomorrow. Whatever your reason, if you're absolutely determined to learn how to divide before you've learned how to multiply, we'll deal with it. Let's dive in. If you really want to conquer division, you should start by dividing conquers. You see, division is basically a fancy name for sharing. Suppose we have something like 8 divided by 4. What this translates to is that you have 8 conquers and you need to share them equally between 4 squirrels, or there's going to be a squirrel showdown. So you start dishing them out until you can say, all done, at which point the squirrels have 2 conquers each. Now when you're first starting out, I recommend actually doing this with physical objects. You don't have to go foraging for conquers and please absolutely don't bring any squirrels home. You can just use counters, coins, lego blocks, whatever you have enough of. When you're confident with using physical objects, you can move on to drawing out your divisions on paper. Now, if we translate this back to math, we get 8 divided by 4 equals 2. 8 split into 4 equal groups means 2 in each group. So where does multiplication come into it? Well, this is the same as saying 4 lots of what equals 8, or 4 times what equals 8. And if you know that 4 times 2 equals 8, you can do away with the dishing out. Every division is the opposite of a multiplication. Even if you don't know your tables by heart, you can still use them to solve the division by writing out the 4 times table. That just means starting at 4 and keep adding 4 until you get to 8. That didn't take long, we got there in two lines. So four times two is eight, which means eight divided by four is two. Let's try another one. 15 divided by three. Now we're not restricted to squirrels and conkers, we can share anything between anything. Literally no one can stop us from turning this division into 15 donuts that must be shared equally between three ducks. So we go one for you, one for you, one for you, and we keep going until all 15 donuts have been distributed. At which point we'll see that the ducks have five donuts each, which in hindsight is probably too many donuts for a duck. 15 divided by 3 is 5. Now, seasoned multiplication pros could have looked at this question and asked themselves, 3 times what equals 15? And answered that 3 times 5 is 15. So 15 divided by 3 must be 5. But even if we don't know that by heart, we could write out our 3 times tables until we get to 15. We just start at 3 and keep adding 3. So we've got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. We got to it in line 5, so 3 times 5 is 15, which means 15 divided by 3 is 5. Now, if you find writing out the times tables every time a bit tedious, you can use a multiplication table, where they're already written out for you. You can either make one yourself or download one for free over at sumsofanarchy.com. So what we're going to do is find the number 3 on one of the edges, doesn't matter which one, so that's our ducks, the number we're dividing by. Then we're going to travel along the line until we find 15, that's our donuts, the number that's being shared out. Once we've found it, we're going to travel to the other edge and we'll find our answer, that's 5. Let's see that again, this time we'll try 30 divided by 5. Remember, we're trying to answer the question 5 times what equals 30, so if you can already answer that, you're done. Otherwise, we're looking for the 5 along the edge here. So we find the 5, we travel along until we find the 30. Then we turn and head towards the other edge where we find a 6 waiting for us. 30 divided by 5 is 6. 
Now, one thing I want to point out here is that there's a whole buy one, get some free vibe that comes along with multiplication and division. Every time you know one multiplication, you actually get another one for free as well as two divisions. It's a really good deal. This is thanks to a marvellous little property called commutativity, which means that you can switch the numbers in a multiplication without changing the result. 5 times 6 is exactly the same as 6 times 5. That's why it doesn't matter which edge you start from on the multiplication table. 5 times 6 equals 30, and 6 times 5 equals 30. Now let's claim our free divisions. Simply knowing that 5 times 6 equals 30, we can also conclude that 30 divided by 6 is 5, and 30 divided by 5 is 6. Learning multiplication first is looking a bit more tempting now, isn't it? Check out our complete guide to the times tables ebook. It's the best resource to help you master multiplication in a fun and engaging way. We'll link it in the caption below. So one multiplication, like nine times eight equals 72, gives us another multiplication, eight times nine is 72, and together these tell us that 72 divided by nine is eight, and 72 divided by 8 is 9, which is really useful because it would have taken us a rather long time to dish out 72 conkers, and a squirrel only has so much patience. Now, there is a bit of small print. Some multiplications are only going to give us one free division. These are the ones along the diagonal of the multiplication table, where we multiply a number by itself. For example, 4 times 4 equals 16. There's only one number involved in the multiplication here, so switching them literally gives us nothing new. And the only division we can extract from it is 16 divided by 4 equals 4. But you'll get the benefit further down the line when you start learning about square numbers and square roots. So it's like a loyalty bonus. Stick with maths for longer and the rewards get even better. Okay, let's do a recap. We see a division, 21 divided by 3. We translate this to 21 conkers shared between three squirrels. When we're rookies, we'll use physical objects or a drawing to share that 21 equally into our three groups. When we're mildly seasoned, we might write out the three times tables and see how long it takes us to get to 21. Or we'll look for the three on the multiplication table, travel along until we find the 21, and then travel to the other edge. But when we're multiplication pros, we'll ask three times what equals 21. All of these methods will lead us to lucky number seven. Now, one thing that division and life have in common is that things don't always work out so neatly. Suppose we got an extra conquer, and now we're trying to divide 22 between three squirrels. Until we learn about fractions and decimals, we have absolutely no way of splitting this conquer. We could let the squirrels fight over it, but they're dangerous little fluff balls, and I fear that might end badly. We're going to need a new option, and we'll learn all about that in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Let us know if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful by hitting the like button and be sure to subscribe to our channel Sums of Anarchy for more maths tips and tricks and to make sure you don't miss part two of the division story. See you later.